Hello, today we're going to make a simple photo booth. Uh, we're going to take the photo, upload it to a server, generate a QR code that allows the user to use their mobile phone to then go to the website to see the photo they've just taken so they, they can save it to their phone. So we'll do a quick uh, demo of how that works. Um, so here is a quick run through, simple interface, three, two, one photo. Uh, you get a chance to retake it or download it, saves a photo, which is the process where it uploads to the server, generates the QR code, which uh, is where that photo ended up getting stored at, uh, and then a restart to take the next photo. So let's go ahead and build this. Uh, so this is the network. It's not too complicated. Um, we have a couple steps that we break into containers. Um, we are using a QR maker, which I've created in a previous video post uh, that we'll link to in the description. Um, and uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward, so hopefully this will go pretty fast. Uh, I am going to try to speed it up by pulling in uh, things like the buttons and how I do those, which I've also explained in other videos, uh, just so that I'm having to build every single step, step by step. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back out and we're gonna start from scratch. So I'm gonna delete this and then we're gonna create a new container. New container is going to be 1920 by 1080. We're gonna name it Photo Booth. We are going to also uh, go to the Common tab and we're gonna set the global uh, OP shortcut to PB for photo booth, just to make it easy for scripting. Uh, then I'm gonna right click on the container and I'm going to go to uh, custom, customize component and go down to the extension um, drop down here. I'm gonna create a new extension called photo booth. I'm gonna click and hold on the add and I'm gonna select empty just to give us a simpler version of that. All right, so now we have, uh, I've gone inside here. We've got our photo booth class here. Now we need to uh, start setting up our containers uh, and then also set up uh, our camera in. So let's do our camera in first. So we'll go to video device in. In this case for me, it's gonna be media foundation. I'm gonna use my uh, C310 uh, uh, webcam, Logitech. And I'm gonna go to the signal format. I'm, on, I'm gonna pick uh, 1280 by 720 at 30 hertz. And there we go. And I'm probably just gonna upsize that uh, with a resolution uh, to 1920 by 1080. You don't have to do this, but just to keep it all the same size. 1920, 1080, and use the resolution of the uh, resolution, I'm sorry, the aspect ratio of the resolution. All right, so that is our camera coming in. Uh, we're also going to later need a cache and this is actually where when we take the photo, we're going to um, snap it uh, using the cache. So I'm going to pulse it in the code, and that's where we're going to temporarily store the photo before we write it to file. All right, so let's go ahead and set up our containers that we're going to need. We're going to need uh, the first container, which I'm going to call um, step one. Uh, and that is going to be called start. I'm going to make the step capital as well, just consistent. Uh, this is going to be 1920 by 1080. And I'm also going to uh, set the display on this um, to off because we're going to end up using a select panel in order to actually display uh, the active container for each step of the process. Uh, so the next one, we're just going to go ahead and build this out quickly here. Uh, we're going to have step two. Step two is our take photo. Uh, then we're going to have a um, 
step three, and I'm just copy paste to save time here because they're all using the same settings. Uh, so step three, and that is gonna be called approve. And that gives them an option to uh, retake the photo if they need to. Uh, then we're gonna make a step four. And step four will be, and again, I'm just copying and pasting from the previous one, so I have to redo the settings. Uh, saving. And then finally, we're going to have a step six, which is upload. Uh, did I miss a step? I'm sorry, I guess it's a step five. So step five, upload. Okay, and then we're also going to have, like I said, we're going to have a select that is going to be how we uh, manage what is displaying at any given time. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger. And um, initially, we're just going to have uh, the start one in that. Now, I can also, um, from resolution one, I know I'm going to be using this as the background for the first one. For step one, I'm also going to be using it as the background for step two, where we're taking the photo. Uh, once we get to the approved and saving the rest, we're going to be using the cache version. So we'll we'll wait before we get to that part. All right, so we have our select uh, set up here, and uh, let's go ahead and start working on our uh, code in our class here. Just kind of set that up as well. So I'm going to drag this over here. And here we go. Sublime is my preferred editor. I think a lot of touch folks use it. It's really nice and clean. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set up the functions that we're gonna need in order to get from step to step. So define uh, step one, self. And for right now, I'm just gonna use a return and I'm gonna set these up for all the steps I'm going to need. So we're going to have a step two, step three, step four, step five. And we're also going to have a um, an upload photo uh, function. So I'm going to just put that right here. Upload uh, photo return. Okay, so uh, we can start coding a little bit here, uh, real simple. The first step is just going to be setting the select to point to the right container. So we're going to do uh, select one dot par dot select, I'm sorry, select panel. Uh, is equal to step underscore one underscore start. All right, and that is step one. That's all that's in that function. Uh, step two, we are going to, um, we need to set up the counter that creates the uh, countdown. So in order to do that, we're gonna go inside of uh, take photo, um, the number two panel. We are going to add a timer, uh, chop, okay, and for that timer chop, we are going to set uh, the length of the uh, count to just one, uh, but we're going to have that do um, cycles, and we're going to set the maximum cycle to three, and we're going to, um, let's see, is that all we need? I think I need one more thing, cycle pulse, which is just the output, uh, cycle pulse. Yep. Uh, then we need to create a select off of that. And we're going to want to select the, um, the cycles, um, which I don't think are being listed there. Let me list those. 
uh, cycles. There we go. And go back here and select uh, cycles. And that gives me my count. So if we now press uh, start, it's going to go one, two, three, boom. Um, but we actually want it to go, and you know, usually you don't go to one, two, three, you usually count in reverse. So we're going to use a math chop to reverse that. So we go to math and we go to range and we change our range from zero to three to three to zero. Uh, then we need to create a uh, text uh, top. And we're gonna make that text top, um, in this case, we're gonna make it 800 by 800. So 800 by 800. And we're going to um, target the, uh, for the text itself, we're gonna feed into it a formula. We're gonna feed into it, we're gonna tell it to be an integer, uh, OP. And then we target the math one. Uh, and then we target the channel uh, cycle cycles and close that for the um, integer. Uh, and then we also want to adjust that size. So let's change the font size to, let's make it bold. Let's change that font size to, um, let's change it to pixels. And 432 is what I've got. And then we're going to make a container and feed that into the container as a background. And then we're also going to set that container to be a width and height of 800. And then I want to center it um, in the uh, in the in the view of the of the parent panel. Uh, so to do that, we're going to do a little bit of formula here. We're going to say parent um, dot width divided by two. And we're going to do the same thing with height. And that finds us our center point. And then we also need to set the origin uh, to 0.5 on both the horizontal and the vertical. So that ends up centered. Uh, so if we go back out here and look, we have that zero in the middle. Uh, and then we need to add a little bit of, of code. Bear with me. Uh, so we're now going to do a chop execute. So go to um, dat chop execute. And we need to uh, do an on value. So we're going to edit this and bring this over here. All right, so let's type the code for the on change. We're gonna do if op math one cycles is equal to zero. So once it has count down all the way to zero, we are going to turn that container off and just so I am going to name it uh, countdown so I can easily target that. And let me find my editor here. So now we're going to target OP countdown and we're going to say uh, parameters display uh, is equal to zero. So once it hits zero, we're going to turn it off. And that way we can um, hide it because we're going to take a, a snapshot here. Uh, then we need to do op dot capital BP. That's that shortcut we set earlier. Dot op cache. So we're going to talk to that cache top. And this is where we're going to pulse it uh, in order to um, capture the, the photo. Uh, so active pulse dot pulse, and then we are ready to move on to step three. So we can go here and say dot photo booth or dot pb dot step three. 
and we can um, and that's that and then we do an else statement and we say if the counter is not zero then we want it to still be displayed so we do countdown again dot par dot display is equal to one so that is what controls visibility of the counter and also once we hit zero takes the photo stores it in cache and moves us to the next step so that is good there so we'll close that and let's go back into um uh, we didn't in, i'm sorry i'm skipping around here we forgot to add our actual button in here that will actually start us uh, so I'm just going to copy and paste um, a button that I've done previously. Hang on. Copy, paste. Okay, and this is just a text into a rectangle with some rounded corners that I've comped using the output uh, to comp the, the input into the box. And that gives us our button. And it's just positioned to float in the center um, and that's that. Uh, in addition to that, we want to add a, cause we go out here and look at it now. It's floating there and that's fine, but the rest of the photo is normally, you know, as bright as normal. So I, I usually like to darken that a little bit. So to do that, I'm just going to add a container, uh, and I'm going to set it to the parent width, uh, and height, which I know is 1920, uh, by 1080. And I'm going to set the look to 0.5. Uh, black is the um, the default there, and you can see how that tones it back a little bit, so it makes our our button pop. And when you do that, you might have to make sure that the uh, depth layer is set correctly, so that they appear in the right order, how they stack on top of each other. So this one is set to zero, and the button is set to um, where is it set here? Depth of 10. So that's on top for sure. All right. So we've got the button now. Now this button needs to take us to, uh, the next, um, step. So we need a panel chop and we'll drag that in here. So we're dragging the button container onto the, the panel. And then we're going to be looking for the L select, the left click which usually is also works with uh, uh, touchscreen as well. And then we're going to need to feed that into a chop execute. So we'll go to chop execute and we'll do an off to on. And all we have to do in this one is tell it to go to the next step. So I'm not even going to pull up the editor for this one. I'm just going to type it in place and say op dot bp that that uh or pb i'm sorry photo booth um dot step two so that is what's going to get us to the next step so um now we can go back into our code here we have our step two so we've gone to step one we hit select that tells us to, to start taking the photo it goes over to step two. So here's where we need to turn on our timer. Um, so we need to target OP. Um, step underscore two underscore take photo. And uh, that needs to also target timer one. And then we need to talk to par. Uh, init, sorry, initialize uh, dot pulse. And then we also just copy that down and we need to pulse the start. Uh, and that will get our timer going. Uh, then we need to also change our select panel to go to step two. Step two. And that is take underscore photo. All right. So we have taken our photo. We've gone from step one to start the counter to take the photo. And then we're going to have uh, step three. So down here, again, we are just, this one's a real easy one to duplicate that line there. 
and we're just going to tell the select pane to look at step three. And step three is called approve. All right. And we're going to have to make sure that everything is still lining up as far as how I've named stuff. Um, all right. So we've got that. We've got that. Now we've got to create the approve step. So again, I have done a little work uh, ahead of time on this. And I'm just going to copy these in here. And again, these will all be available for download. Um, so I'm just going to copy uh, the two buttons that we're going to be using. Um, I'm also going to copy a, a container that's going to hold our image preview of the snapshot. And then I'm also going to have a top in that will allow me to feed in um, the cache into this container. And you can see I've, I've already pre-linked that, but just this container, I've set the size to um, arbitrarily, and then I've just scaled it down. Um, I think that's what I did is actually is I, it's a 1920 by 1080, and then I scaled it by 60%, and that's where those arbitrary numbers come from. Uh, and then I've set the look to N1, and that's why it's showing up like that. Uh, and then we've got our retake photo and our download photo. And again, I've just, you know, set up those uh, in the layout so that they uh, sit down here in the center, left and right of each other. And now we need to program those by adding uh, some panel chops. So we'll add a panel and drag that over. And again, we will select L select. Same thing down here, connected up, L select is fine. And then both of those will run into uh, chop executes. Okay, so these chop executes are going to be off to on, so we can turn off the on value change. And the retake photo is real simple, because if you want to retake it, we simply go back to step two. So we can just edit this in place, because it's a short one-liner. We can just go in here and type in uh, op.pb for photo booth uh, dot step two. And that will take us back and retake that photo. Now, if we want to uh, approve it and go to the next step, well, then we're now going on to step four. So again, we just uh, type in, I'm sorry, op.pb for photo booth. Uh, step four, and that's all we do. So that gives us our approval stage um, to give them an opportunity to uh, select and, and do whatever they're going to do. Uh, so the next thing is we need to save. Uh, for the save screen, it's uh, real simple. I, I'm just going to add a... Um, a little panel in here with text that says saving, uh, saving photo, real simple and center it. And, uh, and that's it. And then we're going to, uh, drag that cache, uh, into the background. And that is the photo that's saving. Okay. So now moving on to, um, let's go ahead and make sure we're keeping up with our code here for steps. Uh, three and four. So step three, we've got approve. That's good. Uh, now we need to do step four. Now this is going to be a little more complicated because now we're starting to get into the code to uh, create the file name and, and do some various other things. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is go up to the top here and import some um, tools I'm going to need. So I'm going to need to import time import request. Uh, and I think these are all standard uh, uh, JavaScript, I'm sorry, standard Python. Uh, I don't think you'll have to import anything or install anything special for these. Uh, if that's different, let me know in the comments and we'll point you in the right direction for adding custom libraries. And I've, I've done a previous video on that as well. Uh, so we're going to import, cannot spell import, uh, exist, and that's just to verify the file exists. 
So step four, all right, so we're gonna code this up real quick. This is where we're going to save and, uh, and uh, get everything squared away here. So we need to, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to um, change the select screen. So I'm gonna just go ahead and pull this down and change it to step four. And this is the uh, saving screen. Visually, that's all we had to do. Now we need to create a file name. So file name is equal to string. And we are going, so you want to create a unique file uh, name because you don't want to overwrite other people's files and you don't want people guessing what the file is so that they can uh, look at other people's photos. So we're going to uh, take a round up a uh, time dot time parentheses uh, times a thousand. And that is going to be our file name. That's how we generate that. Uh, then we're going to set our uh, OP save file. So I've got to actually go out here and do this step now. Um, so our save photo, we need a, uh, a file out. So we go to movie file out and we feed that cache into it as well. And we are going to name this uh, save photo just so that I can easily target it in my code. Okay, so now that we've got that, we want to uh, type in da, 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 op um, save photo and then par.file. And our file is going to assume that we have a folder in our project, our root project folder called photos. And then put a, a slash at the end of that. And then we're gonna add our file name that we generated. And then we're gonna add our extension, uh, JPEG. And that is all we need there. I think we need to make sure that we are set uh, in our save photo that we set it for image and that we set it for JPEG. You can change that if you want to, uh, but that's what I'm setting mine for. All right, so that sets our file name and now we need to actually write it to, um, to file. So again, we're gonna do save photo dot par uh, dot add frame uh, dot false, and that will actually do the uh, one frame JPEG uh, save. Uh, and then we are going to, for later use, I'm gonna go ahead and store this. Um, so I'm gonna do me parent um, store and then file name and file name. So one is in quotes, this, this is the, the key and this is the value. Okay, and next we need to create um, a command to upload uh, the photo. And you're gonna wanna delay somehow to, uh, to allow time for that photo to get uploaded. So well, one way of doing that is using the run command to create a delay. So first we have to create the command, which is op.bp, photo, I'm dyslexic here, photo uh, booth pb, uh, and then that's going to go to upload photo. And we're gonna have to complete that function before this will work. And then we're gonna go down and type in run and command, the command that we just did there. And then we're going to say delay uh, frames equal 30. Boy, if, if I could type any worse. It's because I can't I look it back and forth and I'm just not um, fully paying attention here. Uh, so delay frames 30, and I'm running this project at 30 frames, so that gives me a one second delay to uh, to save this to file uh, before going to the next step. 
Um, and that is it for uh, step four. So now comes the upload photo uh, portion. Um, now, I this gets into a part I'm going to gloss over because this gets into web development. Um, but I'm going to provide the two files you will need, two PHP files to upload and uh, receive the file, and then another file, uh, I'm sorry, another um, a page, a PHP page, that when you send it the uh, file name ID, it will provide you the image. Uh, so we can't cover everything in this tutorial, so I will just be providing the files and uh, and hopefully you, you if you're familiar you can look up if you just have to drop these into uh, a, a directory on your host your web host uh, create a folder called photos um, that uh, it will write into we'll cover that a little bit later anyway for this example I've set up a local server um, to use and my local URL is HTTP colon uh, slash slash photo booth uh, dot test and then we have the uh, PHP page that we're going to be uploading stuff to so that's called photo uh, booth um, uploader dot PHP so that's our URL our data that we're going to be passing to it uh, is going to be a string um, an object here and we need to pass in the submit uh, button, essentially. Um, just kind of mimicking a form, upload. Uh, and then we need the file name. And that file name was stored up above so that we could fetch it back here. Uh, Parent.fetch. And that file name is file name. All right, so that gets us our file name. Then we have files, and this is the. And you you might not have to understand this. You can just copy and paste it again. We'll provide the files uh, to get you through this part of it. Uh, file to upload, um, and we do an open. And this is, you know, this will be different on your um, setup versus my setup because it's just dependent on where you are storing your uh, your project at. So on mine, it is going to, I'm just going to copy and paste this full string here to finish this out. Uh, so on mine, uh, it's my D drive. And essentially, I'm just giving it a path to where the photos are being stored. Uh, the file name, recreating the path to the JPEG, and then uh, giving permission for it to read it in bytes uh, for it to be uh, compiled into this variable so that we can then send it to um, the server. So the next part is we do this response equals request post. So this is a, a form post to the URL with the files. Um, and then just for debugging, I add some print statements here saying that we're uploading and it will return the status code 200 if we were successful, plus some, some uh, from the script I've uploaded. We'll give you some feedback to make sure everything went okay. Um, then the next thing we need to do is we need to update the QR code. Uh, and in order to do that, we actually need to bring in a component um, that will be linked below. I did a video on this about uh, two weeks ago. Um, but this is the QR code maker. Uh, it's called yeah QR maker. And in the code here, I'm going to uh, feed it a QR code op QR maker. Uh, data so we're feeding it the data path this is what gets encoded into the the, the qr when it gets made uh, and then we need to hit the pulse to actually make the qr code so it gives it the data and that actually does the command to generate that image uh, and then once we're done with that we're ready to move on to step five now i understand 
that's a lot of garbly gook in there. Uh, just trust me, copy paste. Mo you'll have to go in here and modify your path to your server and your path to your folder locally of uh, where things are being stored. And again, down here, uh, this is the path for where you're gonna pick it up. Uh, this is again, part of that QR code. So I have that other PHP file called share and you're gonna send it the ID equals file name uh, and that, that'll know what to do, how to pull back the image based on that. And then that finally takes us to step five and step five is super easy. Step five is simply changing to that final panel. Now we need to go and actually set up the final panel um, so that we can get it to look right. So in that final panel, uh, we can again drag our cache image as our background. And then we also will want to bring our QR code into our layout there. So in here, I'll create an in uh, top for the purposes of bringing in that QR code into our layout. Uh, then we'll create a container. Uh, so we'll create a container. And that container uh, will be 200 by 200 or whatever you want it to be, but that, that size works fine. And then position it. I've already kind of figured this out. Uh, and I'm going to say 862 by 505. Again, that's you do your layout however you want to do your layout. Uh, and then in addition to the QR code, we're going to need the button to restart the whole process. So I'm just going to copy that back in here, take new photo. And uh, again, we're going to link that up to a panel uh, chop for our functionality. Do an L select. And it's a real simple one. We're going to do into an execute, chop execute. We'll just edit this in place. Uh, and this is an off to on. And we are, just need to go back to the first step in order to restart this process. So dot op dot bt dot step one. And that is how we reset our, our menu. In addition to that, you're going to want to have some, um, some copy, uh, uh, some instructions on what to do. I've just kind of copy and pasted these in. Lay out these however you want. I've got a headline, download your photo, uh, your use your phone's camera app to point at the QR code, download and share. So now if we go back here, you can see that is our layout. Uh, if I, like I said before, sometimes it's convenient to um, add in a uh, extra container with just the background set uh, darker to... Um, obscure the photo a little bit to make the instructions easier to see like so. And I think my layout's a little off there. So there we go. So now I've got my QR code pick up round trip and we're ready to, to go through this whole process. So in theory, uh, I've got a little error here. So we need to figure out what that error is. Um, so let's look in our code and see what our problem is. Uh, we have something going on with our bright. We probably don't have an equal sign there when I copied it over. Whoops. And let's go back up here. Yep. Okay. So files equals. Uh, and again, I'm sorry. I had to gloss over this part. It's just it's hard, a little more in depth to explain. I think you guys can just copy paste that and alter it uh, to get the results you need. So in theory, I think we've done everything we need to, to now make this work. So I'm going to see if that is the case. So I'm going to click on this to edit. Uh, let me check that our select is set to uh, the right size here. It is not. So let's make that. 1920 by a height of 1080. That looks right. And if we go out to the top here uh, to uh, root directory, um, we see the take photo. 
Three, two, one. Photo is taken. Uh, we can retake the photo if we want to. Peace. And then we can hit the download, saving the photo. And then we get the QR code. Now to test this, since it's hard to kind of, I don't have a full studio set up here to show you through my phone. I'm just going to go to the QR code and it made the uh, URL string here for the data that's encoded in that uh, in that QR code. So it's basically the same thing your phone is doing is reversing that. Uh, and then we can pull up in a browser and see that the photo has been uploaded uh, to this web page that you can style up however you want. Uh, there are some JavaScript uh, sharing um, little widgets that you can add to this uh, that would allow you to share to Facebook and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. I just kept it simple. Uh, just press and hold and save it to your phone. But that's another option that you could add there. So that is uh, everything to have this uh, this work. Uh, you know, we have our camera in. We uh, take the photo. Oops, we got an error of some type. Let's see what our error is. Uh, da, 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 da. There is an upload step five off to on. So something is going wrong in our final step in our code. Off to on OP BP step one. What is wrong there? That looks right. Oh, you know, it's my dys dyslexia. Not British Petroleum, but Photo Booth. All right, boy. I should have maybe just named it Photo Booth. Um, all right, so let's try that one more time. So now we can restart it, take photo. Three, two, one. Download photo. And now we can go and check out that QR code to see if we get my grizzly mug on there so copy and bring up the browser one more time and go to this new url and there we go so that was the previous one and this is the new one all right so that is the photo booth uh, all files that you need will be included uh, you'll need to look at the link for how to get the qr maker uh component which is uh uh, you just download, you have to do a little bit of a, a PHP, I'm sorry, not PHP, Python library install to, to make the, um, the QR code maker work. Uh, I've got a video on how to set that up. Um, I think I've covered everything. I hope this all made sense. Um, all right. So leave some comments down below and let us know if you like that. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.